Okay, we continue in Sefer Shoftim. We're in Perik Yud, Pasuk Vav. We began uh, yesterday by discussing the two Shoftim who we know a little a bit about, Tola ben Pua and Yoer Hagilodi. Seems they were good people. They judged properly, but their effect, their long-range effect after their lifetimes, uh, was not very strong, as we see in Pasuk Vav. And the Jewish people continue to do evil in the eyes of Hashem. Just interesting. You know, it says, evil in the eyes of Hashem. You read it a thousand times, but, you know, what does it imply? But it didn't seem to be evil in anybody else's eyes. If you ask any other Jew, how are we doing? We're doing great. Like it could have said, even in the eyes of Hashem and in the eyes of the leaders and in the eyes of uh, these people, and there was great debate amongst the Jews who was correct. You know, it seemed it was you know even in the eyes of God as opposed to anyone else who didn't really feel it was so terrible. Uh, what do you want? It's modern times. Times are different. But it was even in the eyes of Hashem. Vayavdu esabaolim, and they served. And now they list seven different types of idols. Hapa'olim, Vesa Ashtoros, Vesa Lohei Arom, Vesa Lohei Tzidom, Vesa Lohei Moab, Vesa Lohei Bnei Amon, Vesa Lohei Pelishtim. The seven different types of gods. Vayazvu es Hashem. And they left Hashem. Velo avaduhu. And they did not serve Him at all. And again, this can be why it was only evil in Hashem's eyes and no one else's eyes where we see the Jewish people are serving seven different types of idols and they leave Hashem and they don't serve Him at all so if they're not serving Him they can't imagine they've done anything that isn't proper now the Gemara in, in Beitza this is a very interesting point it says there is a type of legume a type of bean that's called a tormus and a tormus needs to get cooked seven times seven different cooking processes until you're able to eat that turmus. So Hashem, uh, Hashem's response to this, what they did is, listen guys, you tried seven different gods and you still didn't come back to me. So like, I'm not even as good as a turmus. I'm not even in your eyes as good as a, as a bean. You know, where, where you got so much idol worship going on, you'd eventually figure, you know, you'd see the falseness in all this you eventually come to me you tried many recipes cooked many ways you think you'd finally come to me Hashem which they didn't so again that, that's a very strong criticism against them and as, as we said the most serious part is that they totally left Hashem completely this is what we call the total worst fall of the Jewish people this is the worst description of the Jewish people at this point of time in this point of time, uh, remember these are the people who, who God miraculously brought into Eretz Canaan with everything that m- went with that, witnessed abundant miracles, and they still behaved that way. Now there is a medrash that you know I can't say with a thousand percent certainty it's a hundred percent reliable, but it's it's still very interesting. It's called the Otzer Nidrashim. And it says, as a result of this pasuk, as a result of this pasuk, where the Jews had sunk so low, that this came the gzera, the decree of the Asura Haruge Malchus, the ten martyrs who were killed. Uh, now, and uh, although we know there's another medrash that says, because of the sale of Yosef, came the ten martyrs, but this seems another medrash that says this, even though there's only. Um, uh, seven idols uh, per, per se mentioned although you, you could you could there are ten clauses they did Ra Bnei Hashem that's one then you have the seven nations that is, equals eight then it's by Yazvu es Hashem they left Hashem is nine the law of Adu, they didn't serve him as ten so it, you know it, you could see where there's ten clauses here but uh, it was an incredibly terrible situation um, that measures only emphasizes the depths of how terrible this generation was. 
Now, what's more important, if you notice, look, look at the names of these idols and the sources of these idols. They generally speaking are idols that come from Chutz Laaretz, from outside of Eretz Yisrael. Clearly, uh, Moab, Ammon, uh, things like that are, are far away. The police, we really didn't hear much of them, and they're they're in the even if they're in Eretz Yisrael, but they're very far on the, by the Mediterranean. Um, but it's a lot of foreign, and we'll see um, who, 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 who gives them the most trouble, but it, it's foreign influence, meaning to say that the Jews were importing Avodah Zarah into their land. Now why did they have to do that? Because we already learned a while back that the Canaanim were wiped out. There weren't any Canaanim anymore. So, uh, so like, it's like you don't even have any Canaanites, so you're looking to find idols. Like the, before, okay, they're Canaanites here. You didn't kill them all. You're living amongst them. Okay, it rubs off on you. But here, you know, again, you know, it, it, it's interesting how, how the past, uh, the real past uh, low part was in the times of Avimelech, where there was a lot of sinas chinam and hatred towards each other, uh, where we caused our own problems. Uh, even the next, uh, when you had two good shoftim, but obviously didn't clean out all the residual problems but even when you don't so if there's unhappiness amongst yourselves so you're going to always you know there's going to be unhappiness with God too even if there aren't any direct influences and you're going to look for other influences so that that really underscores how terrible this is and you'll see Hashem's response and how things really change in a very significant way as this parrot continues okay Pesach Zion V'yicharaf Hashem Yisrael, and Hashem as it were, was angry with the Jewish people. He sold them over into the hands of the Pelishtim, Ubiyad bin Ammon, and into the hands of the people of Ammon. Again, that is Mida Kenegad Mida, because of the nations per se, I mean, you have others, but obviously it was those that they were um, bowing down to the idols of Moab and the Pelishtim. Comes back to bite them. That these, you, see, you have to understand, the Jews are saying, oh, we, we love you, we're, we're such egalitarian people we'll serve any idol we accept all the idols we accept your idol of Aram your idol of Sidon your idol of Moab your idol of, Ple- of, of, of Ammon Plishtim we, we, we want to be very you know into everybody's world so Hashem says okay you're going to love these people and their idols so these very same people are going to going to want to destroy you and give you all kinds of problems so let's see how, how deep the problems go. Pasuches, these are strong words that are being used now. Vayiratsu, vayirotsetsu es b'nei Yisro b'ashona hahi. Okay, the words vayiratsu and vayirotsetsu, the Mitzvah Sion explains, both of them as an expression of shvira, of breaking, of breaking. Uh, I don't, he doesn't explain the difference between those two expressions, but in other words, they, they broke the Jews. Okay, all kinds of problems. Bashanahi in that year. We have to define what that year means. And then it, it continues like without even a break, even though there's a even though there's an asnachta. Shmona Esra Shana, eighteen years. As Kolbane Yisrael, all the Jewish people, Asher Ba'ivar Yardin, which are on the other side of the Jordan River, which was something we didn't have that much before. Be'eretz Amori in the lands of the Amori, Asher Bagilod in Gilad. So that area for 18 years there was extremely difficult oppression. So what's this Bashanah he exactly expressing? So the, 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 many of the commentators say a lot of the same things. It's a few ideas. Number one, Bashanah he it means immediately upon the death of Yoyer. They, 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 the troubles began. So that has to mean that, you know, this is very interesting. I mean, how long did it take them to find seven different idols to worship if the troubles began immediately after the death of Yair? Right? So. Uh, usually, yeah, usually Hashem gives you a lot of time. So, so that, that, and a lot of them will force you to say this. Why should I say this? Mitzvah uh, David says this, and, and, and I believe the Malchus also. Start suddenly to worship. Well, let's just say if if the tr- troubles began 
uh, immediately upon the death of Yor, and it's his response to what went on, so something had to happen very quickly, right? Um, and and more than that, the Mabum explains, and because of the connection of Vashanai, and then it immediately goes into Shmona Esrei Shana, 18 years. It doesn't like make two separate clauses. So the Mitsuda stuff, it says this wasn't a gradual um, a troubles getting worse and worse and worse. But it's, it went straight into, it was terrible that year and 18 years without any break. It went instantly into the worst type of suffering that they could have. Uh, and the Radak uh, elaborates on that point. He's saying it, 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 it's 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 kimo. You would translate not bashanai but mehashanai, as if it means from that year, because of the way it, it says. It doesn't say ushmona asrei shana. It doesn't say and eighteen years. It just says eighteen years. So it's a connection right back to that year. So uh, so you, you, see, you see how terrible this was. So it's it's very hard to understand. Uh, how all of a sudden, That's right. you know, it, it had to take some time to worship seven aisles. Like, what well, was it like a, a, a world's fair of idolatry? I'm trying to understand like what went on that like so so quickly. See, that's that's why the silence of two two previous shoftim is very odd. You have two shoftim. It's 44 years, and we don't know anything. Besides the fact is he judged the Jewish people. It says by by both by Yishpot as Yisrael, uh, they judged the Jewish people. You know, it, it could be it could be they were judging them, and there was not necessarily, even though it says by Avimela, but by, by the first one it says they came to Lahoshia as Yisrael. Interestingly, it says by Yakam Achrei Avimelech Lahoshia as Yisrael, but by the second one it says by Yakam Achrei. So you are Hagilodi. So I don't know. You know, it, it, we just don't have any information. We're, we're we're left at a loss. Could it be that during these 44 years there was troubles and the, and the judges were trying their best, yeah. not necessarily succeeding? You know, you can try, but that doesn't mean you you succeeded. So that that could be an issue. Otherwise, I don't. We'd have to find some reason why how how all of a sudden, if, if the, all the commentators are saying that in that year. The troubles began. No, nobody says on that year that they began to serve the idols. No, but it seems to me. Yeah. I, I, maybe I'm reading that. That's not what the Mephorsh would say. It please. seems to me that the Mitzvah Sabi says that, but the Radak and the Maldim are not saying that the Shanahi, from the way uh, they're not saying that the Shanahi definitely means after. Well, it's not clear what but, it is. But rather, the Shanahi is goes to show us that as soon as they were taken over by the by the Bnei Amman, as soon as they were Fine. told to the Bnei Amman, but right away... I understand, but 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 remember, that we have to know time frames, and yeah. the Navi can't take away the time frames. Yeah. He's saying 18 years, so what went on, this Shove died, and then it's 18 years. It doesn't say there was two, three years in between of people doing things. So say it, it uh, always it says it always will will give you time frame. So for 18 years they were oppressed. So they were oppressed for 18 years. So what happened after they died? How long was it? The Navi wouldn't leave it so obscure to not know what happened. That's that's where, where, the, where the difficulty is. You're right. Immediately after they worshipped the idols is what happened. So how long did it take? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? The Navi doesn't say anything. And the Navi's been, and all of them, of course, are particular to account for all the years when it says, and they were in their hands for so many years. And then the, the Shofi came to help them. And they include that in those years. They go out of their way to say what's included, what's not included in the years. And here it's like clearly not mentioned. So, uh, it, it, or you could say, you know, this really got Hashem upset. As soon as the Tzaddik dies, they go running to idols. It's all very not clear. It's not that the, that detail, uh, and there's not a lot. There's no Mephorshim on the previous Kufa. It's hard to know. Yeah. Is it impossible that it's uh, not their fault? It's not the Jewish people's fault. Yeah, because it's so unreal. Like what's happening here? Like they giving them Shoftim, showing them the right way. Isn't it the reason why they're so bad? That we don't know. The reason why they're bad is they made a bad choice. 
I mean, le, le, okay, there, there was a tremendous, there's a tremendous urge, there's a tremendous urge for idolatry. There's no question about it. There's a tremendous urge for idolatry that was much greater than, than exists, that just doesn't exist today at all. But still, you know, there was also a tremendous closeness of Hashem that existed then that doesn't exist today. You had the Mishkan and Shiloh, you had the Divine Presence in Eretz Yisrael, you were blessed with good crops, and Hashem took care of you, and if people kept the Shemitah, they had triple crops. There was all kinds of things that went on. Uh, you had the miracles in, in the Mishkan. So you had a lot of good things as well. So it, it's hard to know. Again, this is on the East Bank. See, so, you know, you, you would have attempted to say, maybe in the years of the Shofet, the first Shofet from Yisachar, you could say, okay. But on the East Bank, things were terrible. But then Yorba Menashe, he's on the East Bank, he's Menashe. Menashe is that tribe half in one, half in the other. So if it's a good show, so, so, so how are they getting involved in all these things? It's, it's, it's a major problem. But obviously they want to give a lot of variety to the idol worshiping that they had. Yeah. We once learned with you, I don't remember which safer it was and which, what, the, what the thing was, that the idea that the Jewish people have this hashpah, this, this, this gift, of being able to be influenced by supposed, yeah. supposed, to, be, supposed to be by Hashem. Do you remember? What yes, I yes. So they can be influenced. Yeah. So I don't know that. I don't know that fits in though. So the negative is an answer to Esther's uh, question: yeah. how, like, how, how susceptible we are to the influence of the Goyim. So we reflect. Yeah. Yeah, but but again, there were none in, in the land of Canaan. Yeah. There more than the So they went out of their way. Creative. They went they, out of they their. They invented w- a religion that doesn't exist of eight. Uh, yeah, but, but I'm saying they're going out of their way to go outside the country to find idols. It's already like they were seeking that. Sort of yeah, thing. that's a big problem. Very, very it's a, it's a big, well, Hashem is very upset. All I can tell you is he's very upset. There was never such harsh suffering, and and it, and this is like brutal for 18 years non-stop. Like you, you usually get you get a brutal attack. It's it quiet. No, this kept going 18 years. Hashem doesn't say anything. So let's see, it gets worse. Pasuk Tess. Hmm. Well, it's just going 18 years on the East Bank. Then the people of Ammon cross into the Jordan, cross the Jordan River. To now fight Yehuda and Binyamin, which represents the southern tribes. And the house of Ephraim, which is really the code word representation for the northern tribes. But Tetzel Yisrael Ma'od and caused a lot of suffering and oppression to the Jewish people greatly. So now, now you got it on the East Bank. You had it on the East Bank for 18 years. Now you got it on the West Bank. And the Jewish people cry out to Hashem. Lay more saying, We sin to you. And we have left our God. And we served the Baal. We served all the, the, the idols. Sounds like a very uh, 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 strong tshuva. But we see that that's... Uh, one second. We're Pasuk, uh, Yud. We, we see that that's not... Ex- one second. We're up to now. Yud. So now the Malbim, very important Malbim, uh, the Malbim explains that even though they they worshipped the, the Baal, they maintained they did not leave Hashem. Because they felt that the, that the Baal was the intermediary to Hashem. And the Malbim learns very interestingly, because this will only, with only this interpretation we understand the next passage. He's, we read like this: "V'chiyazavnu es elokeinu v'navodes abalim." Do you think we left Hashem to serve only the idols? In other words, that, that's how you have to read it. It's "V'chiyazavnu es elokeinu v'navodes abalim." No, chatan alach we sinned. We sinned. We're, we're not going to deny we didn't sin, right? But do you think that we left Hashem completely? To serve the idols exclusively? No, we were using the idols as intermediaries to come to Hashem. It's the old fallback position. Right? Well, the Cheta Egel, the sin of the Golden Gap. They didn't serve it yeah. only, it was an intermediary to get close to Hashem. 
So therefore, the Malam says that, that's what they were saying. Which means they're not accepting full responsibility. And which also means they're not being honest with Hashem. They say, oh, okay, we sinned. Now, now the Navi wrote before what they really did. What they really did is they, they left Hashem totally. So, so they have to figure, coming back to Hashem. Now, now, I guess for 18 years, it's going on on the East Bank. I guess the, I guess the people on the East Bank are tough people. You know, they were warriors. You know, to live on the East Bank, you had to be a, a tougher chevra. Because you were alone, you didn't have a lot of help, you had to be ready to deal with all the border skirmishes that went on. So they were probably a tougher chevra. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, for 18 years, they were suffering greatly, it didn't dawn on them to do tshuva. You know, we come to the west, uh, the, the other side, the main barrier to Israel, as soon as it begins to start, oh, you know, that's a problem with Hashem do this. We sinned. But uh, it's interesting. It's, it sounds very much like you find in, in the end of Sefer Tzvarim, where Moshe says to the Jewish people, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die soon. And this nation, you Jews, are going to stray after foreign gods. And you will leave me and you will nullify the covenant, Hashem is saying. And I will get angry at you. And I will leave you and I will hide my face from you. And you, all kinds of troubles will happen. And will be on that day where you say, oh, because Hashem isn't in our midst, all these bad things have happened. Oh, looks like they did tshuva, right? But then the next one says, and I will surely hide my face on that day for all the bad you have done that you have looked at other idols. So what's going on? What's going on over here? They, they said, this has all befallen us because Hashem's not in our midst. They did tshuva. So why is Hashem punishing them more? So the Ramban explains, well, it's a phony tshuva. It's a phony tshuva. They say, yeah, you know, we, 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 we did, we, Hashem's not in our midst. We did some things wrong. Hashem said, some things? Why aren't you coming clean with me? You know, there is this idea, you know, if you want to do tshuva, you know, you get caught. You, you, you have to admit. The question is, how much can you admit with not getting in real trouble? Right? This is now called the Tiger Woods tshuva. <clears throat> You know, he has to admit, I, okay, I did something wrong, but I'm dealing with it, but they wouldn't leave, leave him go. You know, he, he didn't want to admit the real thing, until finally, you know, they couldn't, he couldn't not admit it. So the same thing here, you know, how, how crazy it is. You turn to Hashem, and Hashem knows everything. Now, obviously, if you're, if you're already worshiping idols and all these things, and you're leaving Hashem, really, you don't think Hashem is that real. <laughs> and then when you finally say, oh, he caught me, so he caught me, but not like the God of the world that knows all, that's omnipotent, omnipresent. Okay, so we'll give him a partial tshuva. That should get us off the hook. It's not good. It's not good. And that's where we come back and plus get Aleph now, where Hashem responds through the Navi, Pinchas. Again, Pinchas, this yeah, very Pinchas? mysterious, uh, that's yeah, the Rabag, I believe, says wow. Pinchas, that... Uh, or one of the other misfortune, I, I don't remember, but uh, they bring down to Pinchas that uh, he always seems to weed in and out. Yeah, you haven't heard from him for about, I don't know how many years already, 60, 70 years, and he pops out, you know, out of his cave or wherever, and he, he tells them, but that's who it is. And Hashem says to Bnei Yisrael, again, the next two things are a little bit difficult to understand in terms of logistics. Hello, we meet Shrayim, we meet Hamori, we meet Bnei Amov, we meet Plishtim. Haven't I? Haven't I? So it's run long past going into your base. From the Egyptians, from the Amorites, from the Ammonites, from the Plishtim, going on your base. With Sidonim, and from the Sidonim. Vamolik, and from Amolik. Umaon, and Maon, which is another country which we don't know about. Lochatsu Eschem. Right? From all from all those people, I I I, I that uh, that were oppressing you, uh, didn't I like save you from all those people who were who were oppressing you, were giving you lachats, but titzakuelai and you cried out to me, Veoshias, come here, and I saved you. Right now, seven times, seven times, mm -hmm. seven times I saved you. Right. And, 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 and that's what the Medrash says. Hashem says, I redeemed you seven times. I gave you seven redemptions. And what do you do? And you go serve seven idols? Is this the way you thank me? That seven times I save you and you now worship seven idols? Right? Right? Batem. 
And now he, he hits them with the truth. And you'd give him about ten. Azaftim I'll see. You did leave me. Don't say you didn't leave me. But Tavdu Elohim Achimim and you served other gods. Lochain, therefore, Lo Osi Flohoshiaschem, I will no longer save you anymore. Right? This is very, very strong talk. Now, exactly what the seven times are, there's a little bit of a problem the Malbim points out over here. Because had Hashem saved the Jews from Amun yet? No. It's the first we hear of them. Had Hashem saved us from the Plishtim yet? No. This is the first we're hearing of the Plishtim. Therefore, the Malbim is forced to say that, Halo mimitzrayim umina amori that from Egypt and the Amori I did indeed save you but from the Amon and Plishtim who are oppressing you I am able to save you and I, you know I can save you now it's interesting if you look back in Pasuk Yud Aleph look at the wording it says Hello Mimi Tzrayim Umin HaAmori from Egypt and from the Tzrayim what's lacking in the next word? It doesn't say umin b'nei Amon and from Amon. There's no vav. In Pasuk Yud Aleph, it says mimitzrayim umin ha'amori. I don't. There's no vav. And the mountain says there's no vav there. In the brackets, the mountain says alochein amar min b'nei Amon below vav achibor. No vav achibor. What do you have? What's yours say? It's rhyme with min with the vav. But, but the next one, does it say umin b'nei Amon? Yeah. yeah. No. no mean b'nei Amon. No vav there. No vav there. What is yours? What do yours have? Both of them have the vav. Oh, the the mom goes out of his way to say there's no vav there. Mine doesn't have the vav. So anyway, see, see what a vav can do? Do you understand? Do you understand how important a vav is? We have a big machlokas here. Whoa. Right? So, uh, but mine doesn't and the, uh, the, uh, the red ones uh, don't have it. No, I do not Right? So, 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 mimitzrayim, so from Egypt and from Amoria, I saved you. Now, there's no vav to connect. And then it says, and from, and, and from Amon, from Plishtim, they're giving you yeah. trouble, and I and I could save you. I'm very eminently capable of saving you, and he will eventually. And then he goes back, and you'd base a new pasuk vetsidonim. So, so he says, so, and don't think only in the old days of Mitzrayim that was going back 280 years ago, and the Amor is also 240 years ago, long time ago. Don't think so, such ancient stuff. Because even the Tzidonim, Amalek, and Mahon, which were of er, not so long ago, you called out and I saved you. So again, historically I've been saving you. And even in the future I'll be, I will save you. You know I will save you. So, and so what, this is what I get for all this, and you totally left me. And don't tell me you didn't totally leave me. So forget it, I ain't helping you anymore. You doubt, he goes one further and says, Lechu, go! Go cry out to the gods that you have chosen. Let them save you in the day of your distress. Which, of course, you know, and, and, and that's basically what, I, what Hashem says. Since you chose them, so they're the ones who should help you, not me. So this is, you know, as bad as the rebuke can go. So when they hear that the, the jig is up, I mean, there's like mamish, not, nothing you can, you can't lie to Kaddish Baruch Hu, Hashem is a bunch of liars. So, Pasuk Tesvav, Vayomer B'nei Yisrael Hashem, so the Jews will turn to Hashem, and now honestly, Chaton, we did sin, exactly as you said, and you know what? And we have no excuses. And therefore, they only ask for one thing. It says, Ase you do to us, as you see which is good in your eyes but at least um, save us on this day so Malm explains what does this mean they admitted their sin but they say Hashem okay but why should we be punished through other people why don't you do what's good in your eyes you punish us and don't have others punish us 
is like what it says in the Tachanun where David HaMelech said let us fall in the hands of Hashem but we shouldn't fall into the hands of people right so but but just what you must have just save us this day in other words you know what, what in other words we don't want to if we're, if we're getting punished already we don't want to feel we're punished as you're not interested in us punish us as you're interested in us Remember, you, know, done to you know this is the give and take between but is it to pin- who's, who's the Jewish people are talking to Pinchas Pinchas is talking Pinchas, to them okay. the Kale- I guess he gathered up all the Jewish yeah. people I guess he said we're going to have a meeting to discuss Pith was coming out of the cave after, you know, he drew a crowd. Can you imagine Jewish. that kind of enigmatic fear? Ooh, Pinnacle's coming out again. Ooh, must have something important to say. So they get the whole chaver comes out. And, but so their response is, we, we can't justify ourselves. We, you, you're right. We're totally wrong. We then didn't have the chutzpah to say that, that, that life should be good. But at least, you know what? You be the one to punish us. When the father punishes us, he's not going to be that vicious as when the stranger punishes us. It doesn't help much. The next pasuk helps Tezayin because so far it's all been talk. So the Tezayin by Yisiru es Elohea nechor mikirbom, and they removed the foreign idols from their midst. They did something by Yavdu es Hashem, and then they served Hashem again. This is action. So then the next four words are very difficult to translate. But Tikzar nafsho ba Amal Yisrael. And his soul fell shortened through the toil of the Jewish people. That's the literal translation. What does that mean? So, so it would seem, it's referring to Hashem, obviously. This is Hashem's response. So what is this response of Vatik Tzanavsho? So the Radak says, very interestingly, in his edition, he says, Targum doesn't translate these words. Those last four words, Targum does not translate those words. Um, but uh, because you're talking about God in, in, in anthropomorphic terms I mean, his soul felt short this and that we don't talk that way truth is our Targum does have a Targum but anyway but uh, so the Malbim explains the Malbim explains that through their tshuva the word nefesh has many meanings nefesh means a soul obviously but also means the will means the Ratzon. So when it says, Batikzarnafsho, it means Hashem's will was curtailed. Meaning, His will to afflict the Jewish people became curtailed. Batikzarnafsho, that nefesh, that will to punish us, became shortened through the tshuva. And to, and to shorten what? But Amal Yisrael, the suffering of the Jewish people, the toiling of the Jewish people, it shouldn't last any longer and the enemy shouldn't cause more problems to go to give wreak havoc to the Jews in the central part of Eretz Yisrael. That's how he interprets it. But Tikzar Nafsho, his will was shortened. The will of punishing stopped because uh, regarding the suffering of the Jewish people. That's how the Malbim explains it. Then he brings the Rambam from the Mor Nebuchim. He also says it means the will of Hashem, but he says a little more. The will of Hashem could not tolerate and, and, and bear to see more suffering of the Jewish people. He says, if they've already done tshuva, if they don't do tshuva, Hashem can let it happen. If he's just doing tshuva already, then he can't bear to see that anymore. Now the most interesting shot is the Ralbag. And they're probably all true. Ralbag says like this. He says his, 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 his will for them was shortened, meaning to say his, uh, his patience with them was shortened because of all the Amal Yisrael, because all the things they did. And therefore, when he will save them now, he will save them now in an altogether different way than he saved them before. It was, it's, it's enough. I saved you this time and you, and you, and you do tshuva. And then and all of a sudden you go back. And back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And Hashem says, that's it. And therefore, uh, he, he, his, his spirit of wanting to help them in the great, amazing way, not anymore. Okay, there will be Yeshua, but it will not be complete, and it will be very unimpressive in terms of God's involvement, as we will see. As we'll see, because the next figure that comes into play 
is a very controversial figure who, who will help them and you know in many ways like the lowest of the low of a leader to help them in other words you know we'll have to I mean you know again you know uh, a- after the Holocaust right so you could definitely say in 1945 you could say the words Vatik Tsar Yisrael right His, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't bear to see the suffering anymore the Jewish people right you know how much better they were so, so but so he had to stop it but he, he didn't stop it in a way that you could really see that he helped you well, America, yeah. you know, but but he saved you. He saved he saved you through the lowest of the low, through the most immoral of the most immoral people. Those are the ones who saved you, and they saved you in a way that they didn't. They're not promoting God, right? But he had to save them. But it was going to be an altogether different way of saving them. It wasn't like the Melech Mashiach came. A real holy spiritual person came and promoted Yiddishkeit and all that. It wasn't. It wasn't going to be that way. Anymore. Right, after all, my children, they suffered. I have to stop. So there's aspects of that. Tik Tzar Nav Shova, Mal Yisrael. And that's where we are today. Yeah, so that's uh, and Hashem says, I'm fed up. I'm fed up with you guys. But 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 you are my children. Listen, the whole reason He brings suffering is to wake us up. And 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 they didn't. They were stubborn. 18 years, a whole generation. Nobody does any chuba. It's unbelievable. Things are terrible. They keep on worshiping idols. But when it gets really bad, now it's going into the central part of Israel. Whoa. Now it looks like we're all going to be in trouble. So maybe the people on the western side were a little bit more in tune. Again, it's incredible how for 18 years things are going on in the East Bank. It doesn't bother the people on the West Bank. It doesn't bother them. It's like that in Gary. You know, it's, it's like, like, so you could say, well, it's like you, two and a half tribes are suffering. Do something. It's not our problem. It's not our problem. Right? And they may even rationalize and say, well, they get what they deserve. They want to be on the other side. You want to be on this side. You want to separate yourself from the Jewish people. You deserve all the terrible things that happened to you. No, which doesn't speak well for the, for the Jews either. And then also when it spreads into their life, oh, yes, Sam, it's terrible. Right away, it's terrible. We've got to do something. We've done terrible, right? So we continue. Let's just finish up. Oh, Yitzayim. Uh, so the people of Ammon they gathered together and they camped in Gilad and the Jewish people gathered together and they camped in Mitzvah so what, what's going on over here so Hashem said so the, so the Malcolm says Hashem made a shtickle help over here that remember you have a question what do you mean Ammon now is in Gilad that's on the east bank what happened we said they went right into the West Bank. It says Hashem brought for Ammon, who already crossed the Jordan, to go to backtrack, to decide to go back. So now they camp in Gilad, the place where they were oppressing the Jews for 18 years on the east side. Right? So they're ready. You see how Hashem alleviated the trouble. Already, instantly. They shouldn't go into the other tribes. So now, when the Jews will see they're, they're, they're retreating or, or going back to the other area, so now the Jews gather up in Mitzvah. Okay, so now that they're going to want to deal with these people, and finally Yudches by Yom Ra'am. And so, what do the people say? Sorei Gilad, the officers of Gilad, the important people. Each Sorei, everyone said to themselves, Mi'ayish Asher Yochel Lilochem Dinevur. Who will be the person who will begin to fight against the people of Ammon? We need a leader. We need a, 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 a strong general. Yil Rosh, he will be the leader. Lachol Yoshev Gilad to all those who live in Gilad. In other words, who's going to be the guy who will fight? And we'll make him a leader for the people of the eastern part of the of, of, of the Jordan River. We need a leader. So that's where it's hanging in the balance, which all becomes the prelude to Yiftach and to what this new leader will do for us, which we'll talk about tomorrow, Mitzvah.